All right, folks, it's the final mock of the week until tomorrow's first round mock draft. Um, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do so and make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss it because I got these coming out every single day. You don't want to miss it when your team comes up. You don't want to miss it when the first round mock comes out every single Monday. Make sure you are tuned in and locked in for that. Um, if you like this channel, please leave a like. Um, and also consider if you wouldn't mind supporting the channel with that little join button. Poke around. You can do some cool things like uh, making the pick for your team um, or getting early access to these videos. But um, big fan of this mock because you've only got five picks. So this should be relatively <laughs> simple to do. Um, I'm not doing compensatory picks. And also keep in mind, this is based on, if you look over here, the first round mock that I did. So the first pick was already made. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch that. Otherwise, let's get started. With the 12th overall pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. As I said in the first round mock, it's, it's kind of tough. It's tough and it's easy. Um, it's tough because I don't know the best direction to go for the Lions. I mean, if, if we pick early enough, should we take a quarterback? Do we want to go that route? And if not, I mean, what's the best way to rebuild this? The, the positive side is you kind of can't miss. I mean, if you go wide receiver, you can go offensive line, you can go quarterback. I don't know about tight end or running back necessarily, but defensive tackle, edge rusher, linebacker, uh, cornerback maybe. I mean, you kind of can't miss here. So... Um, I'm looking at a premium position. There's not a lot of d defensive pieces, especially early on. I think Basham is a good football player. Um, I don't know that he's going to be, you know, a 12, 13, 14, 15 sack guy, but just a solid contributor. He's got he's got double digit sack potential, but he also is a very good edge setter, run defender. He's a good, well rounded football player that I think you're going to like. It's hard to say not knowing who your defensive coordinator is going to be, your head coach or GM for that matter. But again, I'm getting you a solid player at a premium position in which there are not this year and it's a major need for your team so there you go with the 43rd pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL draft the Detroit Lions select Amon Ra St. Brown wide receiver USC um, Kenny Galladay is a freak I'm going to keep him I want to hang on to him we're going to keep our quarterback we're going to keep TJ Hawkinson we've got the running backs it's a good group, but we're also losing a lot of wide receivers. So we could go the tact of saying, well, we can wait until later and just look for depth. Or we can say, let's get depth and a very, very good wide receiver and just be an unstoppable offense. And I'm kind of thinking we should just go that route. Amon Ra is not, you know, don't be turned off by the fact that Equinemius hasn't been that great of a wide receiver. He's a completely different breed. He's a better athlete. He's faster. He's shiftier. Um, primarily he's a slot guy which is fine for us he's somewhat of an outside inside guy though he just doesn't have a lot of experience on the outside and if that really scares you I would remind you of Justin Jefferson because when he came into the NFL the thought was he may just be stuck in the slot he is now one of the best wide receivers in football as a rookie so I'm not saying he's gonna be Justin Jefferson but um, he has all the attributes. Again, he's got the speed. He's got the shiftiness. There's some concerns about his size, but when Kenny Galladay is your number one guy, he's your X guy, he's the one that's going to get smashed up at the line of scrimmage. You're going to allow Amon Ross St. Brown the ability to get some flexibility, to be able to be off the line of scrimmage, to beat the guy across from him. Um, and if that doesn't work out, you put him in the slot, he's still a very good contributor. And he can be that, again, sort of outside, inside kind of guy um, to just tear up the NFC North and I, I know we got a lot of work to do but it doesn't matter how bad your team is when you have an offense that gets to be this stacked you can beat anybody that's the direction we're going to go with Amon Ross St. Brown with the 78th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Detroit Lions select Baron Browning linebacker Ohio State it's always painful when we've taken some swings especially early round swings at a position and then you continue doing it, especially when you only have five picks. But I, I, I can't not do it. Jelani Tavai is doing nothing for me. Raglan and Davis are free agents this year. I don't know if we're paying them. I don't know if we want to pay them. We may need to for the sake of depth, but they're not great football players. We have to get better at the position. Baron Browning is coming in. He's six foot three, 240. Um, in 2020, he's actually grading out as a 
decent cover guy, which, I mean, when you're 6'3", 240, you kind of expect that level of mobility. He's had uh, 12 targets, 10 receptions for 107 yards on the season. He's allowed one touchdown, has two pass breakups. So not terrible stats. And again, the grades are solid, but primarily he's a really, really good run defender. 84 overall grade this year. It's a massive improvement over last year. Everything has improved over last year. I think if he would have gone into the draft last year, he probably would have been undrafted. This year, stout run defender, solid in coverage. He's got the tools. I mean, granted, a lot of guys have the tools. It's what you do with them. A lot of this is going to depend on depend on who your defensive coordinator and all that is. But, I, again, all that I can do is give you the guy with all the tools you need. He's got a big program, great run defender, coverage ability. Take what I'm giving you and make something out of him. With the 109th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select... Dante Stills, defensive tackle, West Virginia. Um, so I, I want to stick on defense, right? We got Amon Ra. Our offense is good to go. You don't need anything else there. We're going to get better up in the trenches. So, so far we've got Carlos Basham off the edge. Again, stout run defender who's going to be able to help better pressure quarterbacks. We got Baron Browning who's going to be able to help us against the run, hopefully a little bit in coverage. Now we had Dante Stills and his primary asset is as a run defender, but 6'4", 280, he's not incompetent. He's an athletic guy, which is going to mean he has the ability to grow into a better pass rusher, and he's not actually that bad. If you look at his raw stats, you say he's got two sacks on the season. That's down from seven last year. He's de he's declining. He's worse. He's trash. He's what, right? That's what the stats say. However, look at the fact that in 2019, he had 18 pressures on 219 attempts. This year, 21 pressures on 235 attempts. He actually got better. He's just not getting the quarterback on his back nearly as much. That's nearly 10%, 21 out of 235. That's not bad for a defensive tackle. So he has the ability to bring pressure. Very stout run defender. That is that is something that he's been consistently good at from 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, and so, again, we're getting better in the trenches. We've now improved pass rush, even if it's marginally across the trenches. And, again, bringing in a linebacker to help out along the defensive side of the ball. Hopefully, hopefully. And, again, if we can get this offense going at a real high clip, and, again, it all comes down to who our, you know, whether we keep our OC as the head coach or whatever, if we can keep this offense going, we just need a competent defense. There's a lot of teams out there, Packers, Seahawks, etc., that are succeeding with great offenses and competent defenses. That's all we need. That's all we're going for. Dante Stills in the fourth round. Finally, with the 140th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, fifth round, last pick, the Detroit Lions select Mark Webb, safety, out of Georgia. I haven't really addressed the DBs. We clearly need to get better in that regard. I think one of the single biggest things that can make a difference for this team is if Jeff Okuda can make the leap that we need him to. Because right now he's one of the worst corners in football, but he has the potential to be one of the best. If he can make that jump from one of the worst to one of the best, night and day difference for this team. That's already improving based on what we've done and hopefully, again, the coaching change by itself. Because I think the, ta the reason I keep bringing that up is because I think you guys are more talented than the production being put on the field. And I think everybody kind of understands that. The, the coaching is pathetic. If you get a competent coach, you're already an improved team. You take the guys that you have on the field already, like Okuda, you make them better, you're an improved team. You add in these guys. And, and again, we're adding a safety. So you got Okuda on one side, you got Trufant. We improve the safeties a little bit. Um, I, I'm not a big fan, you know, Harmon and Curse and all that. I, I liked them at one point, but I'm not seeing as much. Maybe, again, it's just a coaching thing and we get them back on track. But even so, um, Killebrew and guys like that, I think Curse, Harmon, and Killebrew are all free agents. So we need more talent. We need more depth. We need more bodies. We need some competition. We're going to get Mark Webb. And, again, we're still in the fifth round. There's still a competent football player here in Mark Webb out of Georgia. Big program, 6'1", 200 pounds. He, he, I mean, that's the prototypical uh, safety build, right? Um, we're we're, we're going to add in a guy. And, and, really, his biggest thing is going to be his run defense, which I, I is probably getting annoying at this point. That that's, it's, I, it's kind of just a coincidence that that's what it is. But he really is a solid guy. He's going to be able to play inside the box if you need him to do that. He can also play up high if you need him to. Not the greatest cover guy in the world. But um, he's going to bring us some some at least some nastiness to this defense, which, again, if we can just be a confident team that can make teams a little bit more one-dimensional, because I'll be honest, it's going to be hard to run against this team. But also, improved safeties, Okuda takes a step, 
We're better in coverage as well. The teams are going to have to play catch up, hopefully, with the Lions if things are going according to plan with the offense scoring 30 some points a game. Um, I think that's going to be the recipe for success. If we had more picks or whatever, obviously, it would be nice to do a little bit more on defense. But I got you somebody in the secondary. We helped out in the trenches with Basham and Stills. We got a better linebacker, hopefully, in Baron Browning or at least some competition. And again, that's that I think is the formula going forward, and, and that's going to depend largely on who we bring in. But I want to get this offense humming at a real high level, and I want to get the defense at least to a competent level. And um, that should at least give us the opportunity to win the North, and from there we can try to build on that. But uh, let's just try to get into the playoffs this year. How about that? That's it. Keeping it short and sweet for the Detroit Lions. Uh, again, if you like the video, please like the video. If uh, you didn't necessarily or if you just want to enlighten me on something, please fill up the comment section. It's going to help me a lot, not only for the next time we do a seven-round mock for the Lions. It's going to help me with the first-round mock draft, which unfortunately is probably already completed. So it'll help me on the next time, not tomorrow's. And if you don't want to miss tomorrow's, again, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you'll know when all these go live. You also get to see the Bears mocks and the Packers mocks and the Vikings mocks, which are still coming up, or any other ones that might be interesting to you. So I appreciate all your support, and I uh, hope you'll be sticking around because we got a lot of work to do for the draft coming up.